So now in this video, we're going to look at a CMOS NOT gate. You could also call it a signal inverter or just inverter. What it does is it takes a voltage in. So it's going to be a high or low voltage. In this case, we're going to use a 5 volt power supply. So if you got 5 volts to the input here, you will get 0 volts out there. So 0 volts is ground and uh, 5 volts is the positive side of the power supply if you're using 5 volts. If you give a 0 volt input, so you close the switch, that makes a direct connection to ground, then you will get a high output. You will get 5 volts right there. So let's demonstrate that on the breadboard. I already built it and this is some extra circuitry. You can see we have a 1 kilo ohm resistor. Blue LEDs get pretty bright even at low current to the positive supply. So if it's on, that means that at uh, this point here, we're going to the negative side of the supply right there. The signal that we're getting is from that resistor, from the positive supply. It's a pull up resistor that I showed on the schematic. So now I'm going to take this jumper, a direct connection to the negative side of the supply, just in case that's a little hard to see. and there's a little jumper, it makes a direct connection to that resistor and the gate of the two transistors. And so, now we got a low input right there. And these inputs don't let any current go through them. They just kind of shuffle a little bit of current, kind of like a capacitor charging or discharging. But the inputs don't let any current go through them. There is going to be a little bit of current going through that resistor and then to uh, ground. But in any case, we have zero volts, the negative supply there, you can see the red LED is lit. So this is a 220 ohm resistor, a much lower value resistor, but you can see the LED is getting about the same brightness, and uh, they both have about the same voltage across them when they are lit. They're both about five volts, we'll look at that later. But there you can see it's the negative side of the supply, so that means where uh, this orange jumper is, has to be the uh, positive side of the supply right there. So we just made a couple switches, but one's a high side switch, one's a low side switch basically. And uh, ultimately we can either connect to one rail or the other rail. And so now let's quickly look at the schematic a little bit closer right here. So we got a P channel enhancement mode MOSFET right there. N channel enhancement mode down there. And uh, we got the numbers there. I'm gonna go through this kind of quickly in any case. With the switch open or the jumper removed, in this case, we have 5 volts going to the pins. That's because when this is open, that's basically infinite resistance. So this is practically none compared to that. And uh, so we got 5 volts. So that's a positive voltage as far as the transistors are concerned. And so they got like a little capacitive area right there from the uh, gate to the uh, channel. And so when that makes the uh, P channel enhancement mode MOSFET more positive on that side, that side becomes more negative, which means it doesn't conduct very good. P channel enhancement wants to be more positive to conduct. Now the N channel enhancement, that's the opposite. So you make the gate more positive, then the channel becomes more negative, it conducts better. And uh, it conducts really well. We'll look at that uh, coming up. And uh, so we got zero volts right there. The load coming from the positive side of the power supply has a path to ground to uh, light up now. If we close the switch, then we got uh, zero volts, the negative side of the power supply. Go in there. 10 kilo ohms is tons of resistance compared to a direct connection to the negative side of the power supply. So now we're making that side of basically the transistor in there more negative. So that side becomes more positive. It needs to be more negative to uh, conduct, enhance. So that turns off. The more negative though comes to this one, that side, so that side becomes more positive. P channel enhancement, it conducts better right there. So we got basically a direct connection to the positive side of the power supply. It can go through a load, the LED and the resistor, and come to ground like that pretty nicely. And when you look at the front of the two transistors, so the BS250, that's an E-line package, it's actually bigger in the back, whereas the TO92 is bigger in the front, but in any case, if we turn them so their faces are facing to the right, they'll line up like that. You can see that if we swivel the source, it'll go up there, and uh, swivel the drain down there, it'll go there. And of course the base is in the middle, it doesn't matter. And then uh, this one, we uh, put the source there and then swivel again in the same direction, the drain over there, 
and the gate will be in the middle. Uh, they line up pretty nicely. So let's look at that on the uh, board really quick. So we got the back here. It's being pulled up. And so you can see that's towards the positive side. It's going to uh, ground. The two gates in the middle, there's a little jumper connecting them. And then we got the source of the two of them over there. And uh, so that's the back of the two of them. There's a little dimple in the back of the E-line package transistor. And uh, now we got the uh, front. So there's the drain of the two of them connected together. And uh, we got the front of the two of them. And you can see that little jumper. So that's where the drains are connecting the output of this particular transistor circuit. So now there you can see that the power supply is at 5 volts. Of course it's on somewhere around 2 milliamps of current. That's because it is the blue LED right there. I have a higher value resistor protecting the blue LED. It also has more of a voltage drop. It's just naturally brighter. So a lot less current is flowing through it than is going to flow through the red LED. But you can see quite a bit of current is flowing through the red LED. It has a 220 ohm resistor. So we got about uh, somewhere about 13 milliamps of current. So that's not completely accurate, but uh, it's relatively close. Maybe it's off one or two. So we're going to set the meter. It's auto ranging. I don't have to move the uh, red probe. Right that for uh, anything except for high current. So we don't have to worry about that. Now we got the voltage. So right now the red LED is lit. As I said, we'll look at the voltage across it. So we'll come to the output anywhere along the output. Doesn't matter. It's uh, connected electrically. There you can see we got almost 5 volts and uh, so pretty close to the full supply voltage. It may be dipped down a little bit because of how much current is flowing but now we removed that jumper we got a high input so now we got a low there. So since that's lower we'll come uh, right here and uh, go up to the resistor and look at the voltage across the lower. There you can see it's uh, 5.028 so I got the power supply set to 5.05 .05. But you lose a little bit of voltage too along the wires. So maybe we are losing a little bit. We can look at the uh, full voltage across there. And uh, it's just a spec higher. So we're not really losing any uh, right there. But also that's not needing as much current. So maybe that's why it can provide a little more voltage. But in any case, that's really about it. This video has gone long enough. Always make sure you turn the multimeter off. And get it off of measuring current if uh, there's a power button and uh, it's just kind of more dangerous to measure current by accident than voltage. But in any case, that's it for this video. Make sure you check out one of the other ones I'm posting. Click like, subscribe, the bell, that donate to Patreon if you can. That helps out the most, but just watching videos helps out a ton. Thank you for that. I will see you in the next video.